I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed by God for this opportunity to bring his truth to you. Now, can we call for that daily bread? Are you ready? Because I'm expecting a miracle today. I don't know about you. If you are, then join me right now to declare. Say this, say, Father, I demand today my daily bread. It's coming to me now. Amen. Jesus name amen praise God and now I release every angel that is connected with your provisions I declare today in particular miracles in this area is happening in your life in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ amen and the Lord just showed me someone you're in their financial situation, a very bad one. Today, you're going to begin to see a sign. You're going to begin to see a sign of how God is going to lift you out of that situation. If there's a miracle that is going to happen today in your life financially, but that is a sign to you that God is going to bring you out of that situation. So when you see that sign, rejoice and celebrate God and keep your mind on Him. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Father, we bless you for today's broadcast. Our ears are open to receive and our hearts are ready to be renewed even in you. In Jesus' mighty name, I declare right now, burdens are being lifted. Yokes are being destroyed by the power of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Praise God. Now, we, we began talking yesterday. What is this whole thing all about? Uh, you know, what this, this Christian work, what is it all about? What are we doing? Many people don't understand it. If you don't understand what we're doing, definitely your theology will be wrong. So yesterday I was telling you about the rapture and how the, the why the dead in Christ will rise. I told you they will rise because we that are alive will gain the victory and mastery over the spirit of death. We will overcome that spirit. Oh, sure we will. Now the dead, those who are dead and those who are dying today, I mean Christ, I mean, they will be delivered because of us that will overcome the spirit of death. Death is a spirit and is an enemy of God. Take note of that. And then the Bible also talked about those who, now those who didn't believe in Christ Jesus and they die. Of course, you know, they are in hell. Now hell is not the lake of fire. There's a difference between hell and the lake of fire. Hell also is a place of prison. Now there is death and then there is hell. You see, those who don't belong to Christ, those who did not hear the gospel, when they die, this is what happens to them. First of all, they were overcome by the spirit of death. And then secondly, when the spirit of death overcomes them and they die, then another spirit takes them over and that is the spirit of hell. Hell also is a spirit. Beyond a place is a spirit. So he's got a place where it, where it keeps his prisoners captive. Now those who die in Christ, they, were, they are prisoners to the spirit of death. Understand, I pray, I pray the Spirit of God will help you understand this. They are prisoners to the spirit of death. Now that's all they are prisoners to. They are not in hell. They are in a different place. Now, 
They are not with the Lord Jesus. Like people say, oh, he's gone to be with the Lord. No, you don't go to be with the Lord by death. The Lord is not dead. The Lord is alive. If he's alive, he cannot come and meet you in the region of the dead. No, you need to be alive to be with Jesus. Get this straight. It is the truth. Get it straight. Ask the Holy Spirit to help you understand this. Now, I'm still sharing the background of what we're going to be talking about this week. Praise God. So, now, here are these two people. Some are in hell. Some are just held captive by the spirit of death. Now, the Bible spoke about this in the book of Revelation. When it says the books will be opened. Then, first of all, before the books are opened, it says, Hell gave up every dead that was in it. Death gave up every dead that was that was holding captive. And I even say the sea gave up the dead that was in them. And then he says, Hell and death were cast into the lake of fire. I said that he calls that the second death. Now you know what that means when hell and death are cast into the lake of fire. It means death really has no power again. It can't hold anyone captive. Hell too can't hold anyone captive. So where are all these people? They are back on earth. They are alive. And then the final book is going to be open. I pray God gives you understanding. And that final book is the book of life. And then the Bible says anyone whose name is not found written in the book of life is cast into the lake of fire. See? Cast into the lake of fire. Now already Satan has been cast into the lake of fire. So who are those whose names will not be found written in the book of life? Were they those that were in hell before? <laughs> is it, is it? I pray this spirit will help you understand. No. They were not even in hell. <sighs> there are different kinds of people on the earth in the first place. And I don't know why I'm, I'm going into this <laughs> right now. I'm, I'm seriously trying to explain, express some restraint. Now, those who were in hell, they were given up to be alive. And those who were dead, now remember, those who died in Christ have been taken away already. Now, leaving those who die after that and uh, those who did not believe in Jesus Christ. Now, these are the ones that will be released at that time of judgment. And then those whose names are not found written in the book of life will be cast into the lake of fire. Why are they cast into the lake of fire? Because they were not even supposed to be on the earth in the first place. God has, God doesn't have their names. Now the book of life was written before the foundation of the world. So those whose names will not be found written in the book of life at the end of the world, they are illegal occupants of the earth. They came into this earth illegally. Remember I said that yesterday. They came into this earth illegally. So straight on, they are cast into the lake of fire. And that's the final judgment for them. Why are they cast into the lake of fire? Why can't God just kill them? Because spirits don't die. You can't kill a spirit. So they are completely judged forever. They are doomed in the lake of fire. It's like a prison. And they are going to be there forever. That's not the place anyone wants to be. But hey, guess what? It's, you don't go to the lake of fire because you committed a sin. You don't go to the lake of fire because you, you stole or you did something wrong. No, that's not why you go to the lake of fire. You go to the lake of fire because you were not supposed to be on earth in the first place. That's why you go to the lake of fire. Every other person who came into this world and didn't hear the gospel of Jesus Christ and died, they will be given the opportunity to see Jesus and hear Jesus. And I don't know why anyone at that stage will still look at Jesus. 
and say, I don't think I want to follow you. Praise God. I wonder who. But if there is such people, of course, the lake of fire is waiting for them. Straight up. Because the earth is now going to be rid of every evil. So your grandpa and your grandma don't think they are doomed. No, they will be saved. I assure you that, praise God. It's in scriptures. All right. Now then, let's go to John chapter 17. Remember, we are talking about what are we doing? All those Christian things, born again. I, I want to live for Jesus. I want to serve God. What are we really doing? John chapter 17. Let me show you. Jesus was speaking here. And I think I should start from verse 1. These words speak Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, this is what Jesus began to say, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy son, that thy son also may glorify thee. As thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. Now, I want you to take note of this statement. Jesus was talking to God. I've usually said this is the holiest chapter in the Bible. Why do I say so? Because Jesus, this is Jesus, the whole chapter seven, um, 17 of John. This is Jesus talking to God. This is Jesus talking to God. So that's why I say the holiest chapter, praise God. <laughs> Thank you, Holy Spirit. So now Jesus said, God, he was confessing to God now. And he says, as thou hast given him power over all flesh. Now, all flesh means all flesh. Everybody. That was the reason God gave him power over all flesh. That he should give or administer eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. Now, you remember Jesus said in John chapter 6, he says, No man comes to me except my father who sent me draws him. Yeah, Jesus said that. So Jesus said, it is my father who will draw them to me. So Jesus here now says, as thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. Now look at verse 3, and that's the important part. It says, and this is life eternal. He says, I'm going to give eternal life to them. And then he now said, this is eternal life. What is eternal life? that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. What is eternal life? To know God as the only true God. Now, that is powerful. That is powerful. Not everyone knows God as the only true God. Some just think, you know, well, you see that you follow God or you follow this other God or you follow this other God. It takes revelation to recognize him indeed as the only true God. So when you get to that point where you look and recognize God as the... You remember, what's his name now? Nebuchadnezzar. When he, he was made into an animal because he... He, his heart was lifted up against God and God changed him to an animal. And he was like that for seven good years. And now the Bible says there was a point he looked up to heaven and he realized that day that look, God is the only true God. And anyone who rules is because he has given him the power to rule. That was revelation. That wasn't something you study about. That's not something you discover. That's something your mind is torn open to see. The day he saw it, he was restored to become a human being. So when Jesus said, this is eternal life, that they will know you, the only true God, 
and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. Brothers and sisters, this is not theology teaching. This is the real essence of what we are doing. To know God and to know Jesus Christ. And you can never know the two of them by reading. You can never know the two of them by trying to research about them. In the process of researching, you may, you may meet them. The only way you will know them is when you meet them. Our time is up for today, but we're going to continue on this tomorrow. And I told you, like I told you yesterday, stay tuned this week. Don't miss anyone. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.